Welcome to third video of Structural Madness. Um, here we are kind of trying to demonstrate how flexibility in a dynamic structure um, is playing an important role in the deflections as well as oscillations under wind loading. Um, I know it's kind of a third video on it, but the problem is you have to understand that flexible structure can move a lot under very small amount of loads. Um, why I'm saying this is because let's say um, you have a very flexible rubber band then what will happen? You can stretch the rubber band with a very small force just a very small force but you cannot do the same with for example wood or steel it's just so much more stiffer and stronger so what I have done over here is a three-story moment frame why a moment frame because moment frames are inherently very flexible and this MOLA model is very very flexible if I just touch it you see it's oscillating a lot so that's why with a small tiny amount of force it can generate so much deformations and so much instability in the structure so it's very helpful for our demonstration what what I do I, I'm, I'm showing two different things right now at one point of time one is why an enclosed building faces more loads in case of wind as compared to open structure and how just a fan wind speed that's what n not obviously 50 miles an hour but a very small or a very low wind, wind speed can cause lots of oscillations in, in a flexible structure as we looked at a couple of other videos before in case of inverted pendulums. So I'm just switching on the fan right now. You see open structure doesn't feel any difference. It's like wind can just pass right through it without even causing any dis disturbances. So for any open structure we hardly see any wind loads and we are not worried about it as wind has enough room to pass through it without getting disturbed. But now what I'm doing is I'll be enclosing the structure with paper on all four sides. Once I do this, you'll see the difference. So as you can see now I've taped up the structure. There's paper on all four sides. It's totally enclosed. So wind has more surface area to act on. The wind flow will be obstructed by the paper, which is kind of a cladding for a structure. And because it's getting obstructed, it will be rerouted. And in, in that rerouting of the wind, because it's a fluid, it creates some turbulences. And that turbulences are responsible for the structure's oscillation. Um, so as soon as I start the fan, you'll see the effects of it. Here the fan is started. So now you can see that it's actually oscillating a lot. Why is that? You see, just some surface area is doing something so amazing on the structure that it's changing the entire dynamics of it like open structure didn't face anything and this closed structure is seeing so much load this is kind of crazy right but well it's it's not as i explained before that wind passes around it creates small tornadoes around the structure suction on one side compression on other side and it causes this sway of the structure, oscillation of structure back and forth, back and forth. Now this was a flexible structure, that's why it was moving a lot. Imagine you being in such a building, um, you'll go crazy, you'll be like, what the hell is going on at such low wind speeds? Um, that's why structural engineers try to make the structure stiffer. Now, going back to our ball experiment, you can see in the background the balls that we use, the inverted pendulum, to show this um, effects of wind. Um, in that case, the ball was kind of the projection on which the wind was acting and that stick is even more flexible 
than the moment frame structure present over here. Um, because it's so flexible, even with a very small surface area of the ball, it was causing so many violent oscillations back and forth. If you check out our video number two or one, which is discussing about it, um, you, you can see that a small amount of force is generating so much vibration or, or movement in the structure. This is very interesting from structural perspective. Um, for earthquake, we want a structure to be flexible. Why? Uh, look at this. It's not moving a lot. Right? So this happens during earthquake. Earthquake frequency is very fast. It, it kind of, the ground shakes very fast. So flexible structure doesn't respond to it. But let's say if it's something very slow. Woof. It's, it's gone. So that's what happens. If, if you don't, if, if it resonates, if it's very flexible, then it's just taking over. It does not have stability to withstand its own gravity loads and literally just collapses. That's kind of a P delta effect too. We'll talk about it sometime in some other blog post. But the structure itself was not able to support itself because it was swaying so much. Um, so I, I hope you enjoyed this, this kind of demolition or the collapse of the structure in case of a small resonance. But this was just a small post about like how flexibility impacts uh, the structural behavior, its uh, deformations and oscillations and the period of the structure as well. So thank you for watching this small post. Um, I'll see you after a week. Bye-bye.